Hey everybody, what is going on? It is Dunbar Snack Bar here with the SEC Championship game. Honestly, this is going to be a lot of fun because every year I get excited for this game because I always know it's going to be a great game. You know, SEC, one of the things that they're known for is great defenses. That's something that um, I personally enjoy. I'm a defensive-minded person. But anyway, Alabama and Georgia squaring off in this one. And I was leaning more towards playing as Georgia because I do a Road to Glory mode as uh, Teddy Crocker, who is a halfback for Georgia. And I kind of wanted to get the feel of what it's like to be able to play as Georgia completely instead of just being the halfback. But in the end, I decided to go with Alabama here. Well, I didn't really decide. The coin decided. I just realized I've been doing a lot of coin tosses here for these lately. But anyway, this will be a pretty great game here. Georgia does get the ball first here, which is something I'm always happy to see. That means I get to uh, get the ball at the beginning of the second half. Maybe get two quick scores. And I like that. All right. Anyway, Harton picking up four right there. So uh, one of the things about Georgia that I've just seen from my experience playing as Teddy Crocker is there is a very balanced offense. You know, we're going to see uh, a fair balance of runs and passes, which means that me as Alabama, I'm going to be struggling actually to go ahead and uh, stop them. So don't know necessarily what they're going to be coming with. Hard to defend against that when you don't know what they're going to be doing. But uh, anyway, so a fourth and two now means that they're going to have to go ahead and punt. So luckily I was able to stop them. And that's actually one of the few times that you're going to see the computer penalized in all these games. But hey, an interception right here. And it looks like with all this green in front of me, I'm going to make it into the end zone. And I do. So a pick six. What a great way to get the scoring going here in this game. I bet uh, Georgia was really wishing that they hadn't gone ahead and tried to go for it there on fourth down, but instead probably would have punted. But that move right there, that was awesome. All right, so 7 to nothing here for Bama. See if Georgia's going to be able to come back after that one here, if they're going to be able to shrug it off or if it's something that's going to weigh down on them here. But good pass right here to be able to get uh, that first down after a two-yard run. They try and go with... Another run here that gets them a one-yard pickup, and then third and seven. All right, so having a lot of time back there in the pocket is something I usually see. That one gets deflected. Fourth and seven now. So, again, we're going to be seeing Georgia having to give the ball up. This time, though, it's because they punted, not because of an interception or anything. But, man, I go deep. Ah, and A was open, too. That's one of the toughest things about doing commentary on NCAA games is it's like, you go back, and you're like, oh, that guy was open. Why didn't I think of going to him? But oh well. Four-yard pickup on that run here. So on second and six, they go with another passing game here. Now, usually I do a pretty good job at being able to stop the run. Uh, so maybe we'll have to force Georgia to keep going with some deep passes. That time it worked, so maybe that's not a good idea. But no, if the computer really goes with a ton of passes, then I know exactly how to defend against that. And usually I can force some interceptions or some bad plays, and the computer doesn't go anywhere. So, fourth and ten, they punt. I get it again and get sacked right from that first play of that drive. Not cool. I lose ten yards. So I'm going to have to start throwing deep. And that one gets intercepted because I got flustered. That's the only way to put it. I got flustered right there. So that gives them great field position at about the seven-yard line here. That will, of course, set up first and goal for them. And we're definitely going to be seeing points out of Georgia. Whenever you see anybody getting the ball right here, this far away from the goal line, uh, it's almost 100% that they're going to go ahead and get points on the board. Unless, of course, they turn it over or I get like three sacks right in a row. But they lose it right there after they try and go with the play action. And I'm going ahead and figuring that they're going to be running it towards the middle. There they go. Picking up some yards here, getting within the five-yard line. And then on that option play, that's not going to work. So fourth and goal actually brings them back uh, farther from the line of scrimmage than they had actually started. So um, at the nine-yard line, this is going to be like a 26-yard field goal. And, of course, that's going to be no problem at all for Georgia or really anybody else to go ahead and make that one. So 7-3. to I guess I should uh, be very fortunate to know that uh, they only got a field goal as opposed to a touchdown. So I still retain the lead here at this point. 50 seconds left here in this first quarter. And now we get the first down off of that run. So I'm trying to do a little mix myself between passing and running. Bell getting that catch here. 
But I think I'm going to rely more on the run. Just kind of being safe. Especially with what had happened with that interception earlier. It kind of makes me revert to the run a lot. Gosh, good pickup after getting hit. You know, spinning and basically picking up five more yards just by spinning. But anyway. Hey, there we go, Williams. I thought both of them were going to, you know, just not go after it here. They was just going to hit somebody in the back and fall to the ground. So mad props on going ahead and catching that one. So go to Williams, who can't hold on to it this time, and Sailors. Oh, man. It looked like he just picked it up off the ground. You know, it wasn't an actual catch. Like, he used the ground to be able to come away with it here. If you take a look at it. But one thing I've noticed about NCAA is you kind of get gypped in that regards here, too. You know, there's a lot of times that there's going to be an interception. It looks like that they just pick it up off the ground, so it would have been incomplete. But, hey, you know what? You take one from me. I'm going to go ahead and take one from you. So in the end, that might have not have been too bad. I might have actually picked up a few yards on that one. So now that uh, we have the ball back again, and with the field position we have, I'm looking at at least a field goal right now. So I'm being smart and just running the ball. I know that I may not be able to get a touchdown if I keep running the ball like this, but I want to be safe here at this point. I don't want to turn the ball over. Wildcat formation, though. Fowler. Cutting in a little bit early, and that works out, and that allows me to pick up eight right now. So I'm going to go with the draw play. And there we go, getting the first down. Now, where we're at right now, I'm totally comfortable running the ball. So I'm going with the option here, and I'm able to take it in for a touchdown. So the quarterback keeper on that one here. You can totally tell that Georgia was awaiting uh, me to go ahead and toss it over. So the fact that I didn't, a little bit of patience there is what allowed me to get that touchdown here. 14-3, to three, Georgia kind of... Uh, Got to get something going here pretty quick. Runs like that, though, let me know that they are still in the game. Definitely able to produce some stuff offensively here. Third and ten now. So, back in the pocket here, having a, some time. Well, maybe a little bit of pressure. Some of my guys are starting to break off of uh, the offensive lineman here. But a good, good first down pass. Now a good three-yard pass. So consistency for Georgia here through the air is something that I've definitely appreciated and have also really been fearing right now. But, gosh, nobody over there, so great job by Bush to come from the secondary and actually end up making it so they lose some yards on that one. So great adaptation there by my defense. And now we've got the ball back here, some more running. Kind of also trying to run the clock out right now here just so that way I can... Maybe get a good score here before we reach the end of the half and then make it so there's no time left for Georgia. And then I can go ahead and get the ball back, maybe get another quick score, maybe make it at 28-3 to three if I play my cards right. So now as we get under a minute, I'm going to go ahead with the pass. Williams with the catch. Now I've got uh, a mixture here of people I could go to. I kind of like having a slant, somebody going deep, just a cut right on in, a delayed route. A lot of things like that but hey there we go with norwood for the touchdown all right so we are able to get that one touchdown here before we reach the end but 29 seconds left and i have totally seen the computer go ahead and get a touchdown with less than 29 seconds left here in the half so i need to be pretty cautious i'm going to be playing the pass quite a bit on defense here having seven defensive backs in and only rushing with three leaving one man there for the spy right in the center all right so, on third and ten, that's incomplete. That's all that they were doing was just throwing it deep downfield, and that's not what you uh, should be doing when I'm set up like that. So, I'm going to go ahead and try to see if I can set up a deep pass. I see A is wide open. Williams? Yes. A call a timeout here with two seconds left, and then I can go ahead and kick the field goal. What a great, great opportunity for me right here. See what I mean? Like, you can score... With like nine seconds left in the game, which I just did right here. Well, in the half, not the game. But, gosh, that was intense. What a great way to end the half, to be honest. But a 24-3 to lead right now. Georgia definitely struggling on offense. But, as I mentioned, I mean, SEC is known for their great defenses. So, I wouldn't be surprised if we went into a half here in real life and saw one of the teams only had three points. But, you know, you've got two great teams here. you got... Second and third ranked teams playing in this one here, even though down at the bottom it says one and six. Uh, it's because I'm going with like a play now feature, so it just kind of goes off of what the game has them ranked as. But, gosh. And, and that's what I was talking about here. It's always a great 
Uh, great matchup here. Two and three. Oh, Washington with the catch. You're getting around Williams. My quarterback not even going anywhere near him, and that's going to be a touchdown for him here too. So here I go thinking maybe I can get a total of 17 unanswered points when in reality Georgia is going ahead and continuing to show me that they are still in the game right now. So 24-10. All right, so now my turn to kind of get some revenge. Bell bobbing and weaving, getting around the defender and getting a first down because of that. Ah, I should have gone back a little bit farther here. But then again, maybe I shouldn't have because I did have to wait a little bit longer for one of my wide receivers to get open. And maybe I would have lost more than three yards. So with the run here, I get nine, making it third and four here. And then that pass, White not able to come down with it, even though... I got it right in his hands. But after a great pa uh, great punt, excuse me, there is a great pass. I really had him pinned deep. I thought that if I went ahead and blitzed, I could get a safety or something like that. But as you can tell, it did not happen here. In fact, they actually got a great pickup because I was blitzing. So that was my bad right there. But third and six now. Again, a great catch. The accuracy that we've been seeing here out of Georgia has just been, been really awesome. I've been getting it to wide receivers here who... Maybe are in double coverage. Not gonna lie, the computer has never, ever, ever, even on the hardest setting on Heisman, never, ever, ever makes the best calls here with who they're going to. Seems like they always throw into coverage, but in this game, they're really doing a great job of being able to, you know, thread the needle here and getting it right to the wide receiver. The running game really hasn't been the greatest, but there have been moments here where things have been going well for him. But overall, could be a little bit better. All right. Murray getting a lot of time, thinking about running there, and throws deep. That one gets blocked. Fourth and seven. Yeah, we ain't letting that go. All right. So now we're going to be going with a little screen pass here. I figure I haven't done that much this game. Like how my uh, forward blockers here went ahead and picked somebody up. It's kind of nice when you see that work well. Very frustrating when you see the screen pass not work, where they just let... You know, there's a wall of three guys, but somehow they just let somebody come through and you end up losing yards. That's so frustrating because you're like, ah, I could have gotten a pickup of yards there. But only one yard pickup on that run to set up third and three. So both teams have kind of stalled offensively here in uh, the second half. Now, Georgia has gotten points off of that interception, but no. Uh, and then speaking of interceptions, here's one for Lester. But nobody's really been able to produce anything offensively now. And that's something that's been kind of surprising because I thought I was not doing too bad. Granted, you know, I've had 10 points come off of, of turnovers here by the computer. So it should be like 14 to 10 if it wasn't for those turnovers that I had. But getting it to Norwood here, thought that I have enough room in front of me and enough speed to be able to get into the end zone right there or, or get a bigger pickup. But I didn't, and that's okay, though. I'll just have to do this the old-fashioned way. Welcome to the fourth quarter, by the way, you guys. I haven't really been keeping track on that, but third and inches, getting it to the fullback, getting the first down. That tends to be what I like to do here when, uh, you know, I've got third and inches or second and inches, whatever it may be, or even one yard. I don't like going with the halfback so much because it takes more time for the computer to get that. And if they're blitzing or they're, uh, they know I'm going to be running the ball up the middle, it means I could lose yards. So, all right, again, not a great drive for me. So, four minutes and five seconds now. Gosh, every time that it switches to a different highlight or something like that, I got to always say another time. But, all right, under four minutes now here, fourth and five. I could just be running the ball here, but I am trying to run down the clock here through some passing. And I know that 14 points that separates Alabama and Georgia right now is not something that I can really feel comfortable with. You saw what I can do. The computer can do the exact same thing. One deep pass, and this game could change here. You know, because then they could get an onside kick, maybe do something else pretty crazy. But here we go, deep. Bell getting the catch. That was a great dive, too. All right, so on the run here. Now I definitely am going to be running the clock down as much as I can. But I can't resist getting a touchdown right here. Probably didn't need to do that. 31-10, though. So, with a 21-point lead, I definitely have the game in reach. I really, really feel bad now that I did that. So, 
I don't know what I was thinking. Actually, you know what? I take that back. I was pretty frustrated because I lost a game in Madden, which I posted on Thanksgiving. And uh, the computer ran up the score on me. So I kind of vowed right there that I'd run the score up on the computer sometime. So I'm like, maybe I should do that here in this game. So honestly, Georgia fans, I apologize for that one. Really, it's nothing against you guys. And I want everybody to know that whenever I go ahead and I pick teams and stuff like that, I'm really not trying to make any statement. There's no team that I really, really like don't like over another one. So um, if you guys are Georgia fans and you want to see Georgia wins, just head over. You'll see Teddy Crocker. I'm destroying people uh, with that one. And it's going to get a lot crazier, too, as I get better. So anyway, why am I doing this here? Deep pass. It's caught. Bell with the touchdown. All right. So I really feel like I'm rubbing it in now. So. Let me even apologize more than I did just a little bit ago. I really am sorry about this, but uh, anyway. So the score is really not going to reflect how this game actually went, in my opinion, because it uh, should it be 24 to 10. Actually, without the turnovers, it'd be 14 to 10. So this game actually ended up being a lot closer here than the score shows. So mad props to Georgia for a hard-fought game. Really, really making it tough for me to be able to score. You saw just right at the end, I only had one big play. That was kind of unnecessary. But anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. I really do. Feel free to subscribe, you guys, if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and all that great stuff. All you got to do is check the description below. But you guys are phenomenal people. You really are. More football, of course, to come throughout the day. But thanks again, you guys. And as always, I hope you guys have